pa 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 Community. Wait, my bot's not running. Hello? A moment. Dukasoft's bot is running. That's not fair. Hello, 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 and welcome to another One Lion of Code. I am One Lion. Today is Community Day Friday. Yay, my bot's not up yet. I don't remember closing it or stopping it, but it's definitely not running. And it's acting like I had closed Visual Studio since then. So I probably restarted my computer at some point. Anyway, hi, happy Friday to you. Hope all is well. I bet you couldn't tell what I was doing, what caused my delay. <laughs> Same thing that causes my delay every time. Project manager wants to call five minutes before he knows that I am not going to be available, and yeah. Close that. Close that. Night. Uh, did you hear about the scientist who was lab partners with the pot of boiling water? He had a very esteemed colleague. That, we're on a meeting with the boss man. Okay, all right, you win. Why did you open over there? Open over here, bot. What is this? That is security plus SY0701. I'm getting my CEU, my continuing education units so that I can renew my uh, Security Plus training before next month, or certificate before next month, as well. When is Boss Man joining the stream? I don't know. I keep inviting him. I'm like, you know, he probably just doesn't want to hear the things that I say. That's fine. Um, local host 7231. Connect to Twitch. It's okay. I'm here now, says Big Gamey. Awesome. Um, first of all, since he showed up first, hello, Thindle. Um, shout out to Thindle. We will take... Do I have shout out clips on this scene? Doesn't matter. We can go to this scene now. Everything is good to go. Um, let me check in with the bot. Good morning. Are you awake? Automated Realms is awake. Give me a sec, Thindle, please. Just like 20 seconds. That's all I want. Just 20 seconds. We'll start community day shortly. <laughs> Yell out. <laughs> Thindle. Here's Thindle who's going to join us in voice channel soon. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I will no longer allow spaces in my slugs. There, done. That's all I needed, I think. Let's hey, I was it there shut for down. This one. It is now. Let's open this one. Start it with watch. No more space slugs. Um, start camera. Gotta be there soon. And then as soon as we are able to, I'll do a fancy shout out for Big Gamey as well. But if you didn't, if you couldn't tell, Big Gamey does, uh, sorry, Bindle does .NET streaming. Um, he is modernizing a legacy, a .NET framework application to .NET Core. It's an e-commerce application and he's just doing all the things that need to be done in general to get that done. The other fantastic person in our stream that streams is Big Gamey. Here is a clip shout out of what you could expect from his channel. That's it. I'm telling Lita on you. Lita! Lita! The link is turning me into a baby! Yes. <laughs> Prime I'm example. Prime example. I can stop. <laughs> what 
you might expect from his stream. Um, you can turn him into a baby, except now we have Bitly the Kid, who is a criminal, apparently. And we got to try to catch him. And sometimes we do, most of the time we don't. Um, <laughs> who's that whiny baby? Who would watch that? Um, I would watch that. So I'm almost always there, hanging out with him. Um, in fact, I'm already in your channel hanging out until you start your stream. If you're going to stream today, no pressure whatsoever. Um, but if you were planning on streaming today, I'm already there waiting for it to start. Because um, I don't have all four slots filled for my multi-stream. Okay, so there's that. Um, we checked up on Automated Realms. It's alive. All right. Okay. Um, that's the bot. I need to refresh that, I think. And what else is there? What else is there? I think that's everything. Um, I don't know. I feel so. I hate it when like <laughs> I'm on a call and then I have to find a polite way to say to my project manager that I need to go because this is time that I have blocked out. We've talked about this. You were OK with me having this time blocked out and you're still going to try to hold me beyond this time. So then my brain is all jumbled. And then especially on a Friday, especially on a Friday. Um, <laughs> when I want to do community day, but he just drains my desire to interact with people. But anyway, <laughs> I must go. My people are awaiting. Then you raise your hand and fly off. Okay. So I'm pulling you into the stream room, Findle. So prepare to mute the stream and listen through discord. Here we go. Hello. Mic check. Hello. Mic check. Ooh, I have you really quiet. Right, because I have the audio on the same channel as Firefox and we were doing sounds. But yeah, okay, mic check again. All right. There we yep. go. Mic check. Clean. Solid. Solid, solid. How are ya? I already said how I am. <laughs> Your turn. Um, how are you? I was saying it. In person. Well, oh. yeah, <laughs> voiced, right? <laughs> Close enough to in person, I in think. Real time. Yes, yes. Speed of light time. No, I'm good. Have a little bit of a headache, but mm. overall, I'm good. Yeah, it's a great way to start off the lunar year. Mm. Yeah. Headaches. Just got back home yesterday, being away oh, all yeah, week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw pictures. Yeah. You can tell us yeah. all about it floor is yours yeah. and i'll ask questions and talk with you and such mm. yeah uh one sec uh yes i like how Ubisoft already posted first yes, sorry i've been there longer than uh, uh yes i was at a conference standing in front of a ton of people uh, i think we ended up with about 65 and then they had to close the doors because the um room was full so about 15 to 20 people got turned back, turned away. And I was talking about the same thing I do on stream. AKA, I was talking about migrating projects from Framework over to uh, yeah. cool. Net8. Yeah. You just said you are awake. And in my other window, I'm looking at Alan Wake too. Spooky. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for taking all of the space slugs out. No one had room yep. to, to go into the meeting. 
No more space slugs. Presentation, whatever it is. Mm. Yep. You're going to be at dinner in like two hours. Oh, so yep. you won't be watching the gamey stream. No, I can't. And I don't think I can stay until the end here either. I need to be out by well, 20 hundred my time. So like an hour, I think. Do, do. But yeah. yeah, but you know me, like I, I don't like to disrespect people. And then I have this thing where like if I'm at work, you know, I'm at work and this is normal work hours. But I have also talked with them all and said, hey, are you guys OK with me taking this time? And it's been like this for two years now. And mm. they were like, yeah, we're OK with that. And then they keep wanting to step on it. And I'm like, yep. What am I it's supposed like, to do? I can't get angry. I'm not allowed to get angry at them because it's during normal work hours. But they also said ahead of time, they're okay with yeah, this. Yeah, but it's not really normal work hours for you. Right? Your I mean, normal it's work part hours of core have work a hours. pause in them. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a part of their work hours. Core work hours. But... So I think in the U.S. core work hours are like from eight to. Oh three, yeah, yeah. But what about I mean, people in different time two. zones? Do you call people at six a.m. just because they're on uh, the west coast and you are on the east? Yes, actually, <laughs> we get that a lot, especially um, overseas. Okay, that's our um, security meeting last week. A security review meeting last week was at six thirty in the morning. Hmm because the the security review person is overseas that kind of sucks <laughs> but we I mean, finally got our be security trying review to adapt back. a bit right uh, they they always do i mean not always they typically do yeah mm. whenever there is a team that has overseas people they tend to have their work hours shifted later in the day so that they end around 10 p.m. so that at least part of their time overlaps with people in the U.S. Mm. Yeah, you have to adapt to the majority. Mm. But it's weird, though. I think the majority of our... Well, I guess Sujeti USI, USI is in the U.S., obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if you're I going into a meeting with 90% Europeans, I'm guessing you'd be yeah, on yeah. European time, right? Yep. And I'd be okay with yeah. that, as long as it's consistent. And, yeah. And you are consistently not available during these uh, hours. Exactly. Yeah. So. And I keep asking them, I'm like, guys, you keep scheduling stuff for this time. Do you, should I be changing these hours? Because I'm not going to do this in the evenings. Um, I'm doing this mm -hmm. during the workday so that. 3.30, end of my day, and then I do me stuff. Yep. Oops. Close that. Okay. So, um, back to you. <laughs> Sorry. I keep, I keep going off. No, no, off no. The it's fine. Um, I mean, you're uh, in the middle of stuff, too. Yeah. So. Let's go back to your actual presentation experience. You said in okay. the message that you you were pretty much nervous all the way up until the end point. So that's yep. my primer. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, I mean, you're expecting to be standing in front of, I don't know, 40 people maybe. So you're worried. It would be weird otherwise, I think. Uh, uh, the, uh, the entire presentation the night before took about 55 minutes. I had a live demo session that I've never done before in front of people. And uh, yeah, and then uh, you wake up in the morning. I had the first session of the day because I really wanted to. So I asked them for it. I'm with Digisoft. So I could get it out of, you know, get it done. Woke up way too early, went to a conference, did my tech test, kind of bounced on the spot for a bit. And uh, yeah, and people started piling in. I was like, uh, I expected like 30 and now there is more than 30. 
<laughs> they kept coming and coming and coming and coming. Because, like, this is the majority of .NET work. It's modernizing legacy line of business applications. That's what we yeah. do for the most part. Yeah. So everyone wants yeah. to know, what is the secret sauce? But we're, we'll yeah. get there. How first, did you do it? <laughs> yeah. First, we want to know about your experience with doing the actual presentation. And then we'll get into the content. Um, no, nah, then, I mean, you're nervous as heck until you open your mouth and start talking and then it just, yeah, Blows. time just flies by. It's a clock on there and you're worried about going too fast yeah. and you're worried about being <laughs> late. You know, when, when the clock says that it's going to be 20 minutes and you look at where you're in, in your presentation, you're like, okay, I'm going to be done in five yeah and you don't want to leave too much room for questions because that's also stressful yeah but you want to leave and, enough room that there are questions yeah and then you just go and go and go and it i think i ended like two minutes early or something uh, some questions and then done it, it went great second time ever i've done this and i loved it i just go I loved it all of the first time too, but I mean, I did well one more time, so I um, think I'm gonna stick with it. Ooh. Yeah. On the downside, I mean, I was at a conference, I was there for two days, I got home yesterday at about 1 a.m., and I woke up today with the biggest headache you've ever heard of. Second biggest headache I've ever heard of. Okay, so you had a worse one? No, not me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, it, I'm not going to go into hyperbole, but... Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of distracted you know, by that, too. One upping in one. I'm just... Well, no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just letting it... It was my segue into saying I'm a little bit distracted because uh, someone that I really care about is not feeling very well at all oh. with a really, really bad migraine and some physical symptoms that are kind of scary. Mm -hmm along with that so that is not good yeah just think you of how distracted you were when zelda was not feeling well it's, it's oh yes oh yes heck yeah <laughs> heck yeah but yeah yes okay. so that sucked but presentation went well but you also and got to hang out two with days ed with layla with ed and someone with that i did layla who's the third person with luz with Stacy Cashmore, with Mark Miller from Code Rushed. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Knowing his name. <laughs> he is really freaking tall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you. you, you I see thought he'd be floating around on a spaceship the whole time. I didn't yeah, think he had legs. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> no. He has legs and they are long. You know, you you expect to see someone look at look a certain way, and then when you meet them, you're like, "Oh, I have to look up, not just you know <laughs> look up because this person is an awesome person." It's I literally have to lift my head to look at them in the face, mm. look them in the eyes. Yeah. So that was an experience, and then uh, Jeff showed up on the actual first day of the conference in we the have afternoon. so many jeffs but we know who you mean c-sharp fritz fritz c-sharp fritz yeah. and <laughs> um, my experience there would be that he is about as big in real life as he yeah. is on stream larger than life i mean he has a big personality yeah yeah and he's easy but to talk to in, and in friendly and everything way. but yeah Oh yeah, he's really nice, and he he just exudes. He's easy to talk to. It. Yeah, he takes a lot of room in the room, yeah, a lot of space. Yeah, but great person. Really like you great. say that to an introvert, and that sounds like a bad thing, but this really is uh, in a good way, even for oh yes, it's, oh yes, yeah. It's just he's <laughs> very easy to socialize with, and um, that means a lot. A lot of people choose to socialize with him, but he's never, you know. Never yeah, it's not the imposing it. kind of taking up room, taking up space. Oh, yeah. It's just this. So, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Spent, yeah, 
I was there yeah. until yeah. did you see just Duke after is five? Uh, no, no, I don't have the shout out. Oh, sorry. are they the same person when not behind the camera? Curious. Uh, Fritz is. Fritz is one hundred percent that but only uh, Fritz, Layla, Layla, Layla Mark, Layla, and Ed. <laughs> They're yeah. all conniving. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Layla codes it is a little bit more I don't know laid back mm. in real life. Uh, That's Mark cool. is really also cool. a bit more laid back, but I mean he's pretty darn hyper. So he's high in real vibrating life? energy or, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, he he's a little bit slower. I'm not sure if that's a good word for it, but more chill. It's not, you know, not boring in any way, but yeah. It's not quite as much Mark as Mark would make you think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Ed has the most dad humor you can imagine. <laughs> you can see it on him, too. Yeah. It's like insane. I mean, I don't know him. Like, we, we don't... I don't even know if he knows that I exist, which I don't really care about. Not a, not a complaint or anything, but... Mm. Um, you could just tell from his stream personality that his off-stream personality is still very kind of dead oh, joke, yeah. little gooberish, yeah. but in, again, an endearing way. <laughs> yep. 100% that. Uh, let's see. Um, Stacy is Stacy. Um, mm. She is herself, always. Uh Luz is also herself. Very easy to talk to, very easy to everything with. Uh, they're a little bit um, laid back, if that makes sense. Um, they they take way less space. Yeah, let's put it that, that would way. be me if you if you met me in person. Yeah, yeah, but they don't take a huge amount of space on stream either. So pretty cool. Yeah. So that's the team, more or less. And then there was tons of other people who uh, don't think stream. Oh, right. Uh, do you remember Simon? Simon W? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he was there. Uh, also a pretty laid back guy. Uh, not at all as big either. Checking my notes. But fun. You open over there. Uh, what else? Um, do you know who Eagle is? Yeah, Eagle Hansen. He comes here yeah, exactly. uh, on occasion. And yeah, he said that he so hasn't cool. really been on so Twitch cool. very often. Yeah, yeah. he hasn't uh, been able the to. The author of B Unit, <laughs> if you didn't know that. Actually, um, let's see. Did we know that? Mm, I have a check, man, for him. <laughs> So yes, <laughs> we definitely knew that. Yeah. Also real nice guy. Also very laid back. Yeah. And then there was a couple of terrible, terrible human beings. They were from Denmark. <laughs> so horrible. Wait, isn't, isn't Eagle Danish? No, he's from Iceland. He lives in Iceland, right? But he is Danish. Uh, oh, he might be Danish, but yeah, yeah okay. So he's <laughs> ex-Danish, and that's that's all right. <laughs> he's all right. So anyway, what what Findle is trying to say is that we love all people, regardless of where you're from. We definitely do. It's just the Swedish yoke. The Danes hate lo love hate us as well, and we all laugh laugh at how stupid the Norwegians are. I'm just making it clear that his views and opinions are his own. And it's a cultural thing. Yeah, and they're not actual opinions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, this is true. This is true. Uh, what do we have? Okay, so on to the con. What is the Danish version of, you we know, we hate the Danes know. and Norwegians? We, we really are... don't need to know. All right. <laughs> Back to the content. Let's leave it. <laughs> yeah. So the actual content that you talked about, you said, is on modernizing.net or 
what would you call the term for it? What term did you use for going from .NET Framework to .NET Core? Uh, I called it the path, no, the road taken from Framework to .NET 8. Hi, Napalm. Um, but what what is the term that you use? Because the terms that I use, for example, are modernizing the application. Yeah, I not a really lot of people think that modernizing is the right word, mm. even. Mm. So what we're doing? Uh, I don't use? think I called modernizing. I think I called it conversion. Conversion. Okay. Yeah. And then do you have like any reasons why conversion fits better than modernization? Again, this is just like the semantic part of it. it because really I mean, matter. we're uh, we're telling people that we need to come that we need to modernize from something because it's old, and I don't want yes. to be mean to web forms, but that's why I call it modernizing. Just nice to me as opposed to converting. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying converting because that means we're just changing, not that we're kicking it out because it's the last oh, year's model. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. But gotcha. at the same time, I don't think it really matters that much. I did get a couple oh, no, of questions no, about why I went with MVC instead of Razor Pages. Oh, mm -hmm. and what was your answer? Because uh, that's, that's a very curious question. Yeah, yeah. My also was pretty much, I don't know. <laughs> what would your answer be if you had more time to think about it? Like, let's say you it were would be... under the gun and you have to give a valid, yeah. genuine answer. It would be that MVC is a uh, proper, good uh, platform that's been tested, that's been around, that seems like it will be around for a long time. And uh, I know it. From customers at yeah. the same time the platform is less important between race pages and mvc because the controllers are extremely shallow i'm trying to keep my controllers at like three lines yep. per action max yeah so what uh, you're trying to say is the code the facade, that you write so. is just agnostic of which platform you decide to use you could put razor pages on top of it as long as you point yep. to the same back-end or uh, main yep. core logic calls. Mm. Yep. I like that a lot. Uh, so uh, the, um, I also mentioned that, you know, I haven't yet, but I'm going to be adding API endpoints to everything. Mm. Everything that's exposed by the website will have an API endpoint. And because I'm doing facades, I'm doing DTOs, should be easy. Yep. Napalm. Yeah. Napalm incoming. Yeah. Mike check Napalm. Hey, Napalm. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Mike is checked. Yep. You're good. Cool beans. So we're yeah. talking with Thindle about his experience at Sweet Dug. Congrats, mm -hmm. by the way. Thank you. Thank you. So how are you so... doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm... I'm just ducky. Ducky. Sounded like you're having some uh, issues on Wednesday's stream. And then I think you added something to Discord. It was either you or it was um, someone else. Anyway, about the crashing or the bugs, the test coverage. Test coverage is what it was, right? I don't think that was me. Oh, okay. I'm wrong. It could have been you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm always having unit testing fun. So. <laughs> I just feel like I got all Yeah, I lied at my session. What did you say that was untruthful? I told people that I tested things. I tested How dare. some things. <laughs> Well, it's I like mean, one of the things I pushed at, like, do testing. Now is a good time to do testing. Mm -hmm. Make everything testable. <laughs> Write the test. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that because I'm trying to make things testable. Mm -hmm. Not so much writing the tests. So it, might not it, be it the wasn't best you. Way. It wasn't you, Napalm, that was complaining about like how even Copilot was writing bad tests. Oh yeah, it wasn't in Discord though. Well, yeah, I mean, like on Wednesday's stream, I remember you having just some team yep. issues. 
Yeah, it just yeah. wasn't doing what I wanted it to, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I used my memory, and it was actually correct. Weird. Yay. That never happens. Part of the problem, I think, is that uh, this particular piece of uh, the Cosmos DB SDK isn't very testable inherently. Um, so I kind of had to rip it out and build um, essentially a, a dummy implementation of the abstract class instead of using fakes because everything was either static or not virtual and right yeah. right that was my exact thing i was going to say that if you can't test something then abstract it away behind something that you can test it basically real life adapter oh sure i just had no interest of writing yet another freaking wrapper for microsoft's crappy sdks so <laughs> i can definitely hear you <laughs> i can definitely hear you mm. I mean, on the really stupid level there, I don't understand why the heck they sealed HP client. Yeah, that, I don't I mean, know. Wouldn't I'm, that be I'm, really I'm, easy to just mock that and say, you know, get JSON as, get page as JSON, whatever. This entry, return this object. How hard would that be? But no, we have to deal with HTTP requests and... Ugh. My personal opinion, I'm not a fan, and I don't think I've ever actually used it for anything, of sealing anything. Like, in an agile environment, how can you say, yeah, this class is sealed, final, leave it alone, you know? There is a performance benefit. Eh, it must be negligible, because I've never but ran a case where I wanted at it. At the anymore. same time, I feel like the compiler should be able to look at something and say, yeah, there's no one inheriting this, I will seal it in the binary yeah seal the dll the compiled output don't make me seal it in code <laughs> yeah yeah but no we have to do it manually and uh, sometimes that gets very much in the way of things it's okay the next dev can write the tests as too <laughs> yeah dude and that's i like that one like the uh, test struggling with because the previous dev punted oh that that's a nerve man <laughs> <laughs> mm. How about the previous dev wrote the tests? That's a good situation to be in, right? Say that again? If the previous dev wrote the tests. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. But yeah. my life, I'm the one that tests and nobody else. And then I get hit with the percent coverage issue on CICD. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking about. That you were yeah. not so happy about happening. I think enforcing a percentage in a CI build is don't want to use the dumb word, but it's less than in less than a good thing to do, or a not very good thing to do. Well, what what are your reasons why? If you feel like saying them, my reason know. is that sometimes it's not very efficient. Um to enforce a level of testing when that level of testi testing doesn't make sense and just forcing people to write stupid tests to fulfill a metric. Like, I don't care if my 500 instances of argument is null or exception. Or... Yep. And so TBD so gamer with null is or whatever. with you. For sure. Forcing yeah. developers um, to do that makes them focus on the number of tests rather than the quality of tests. So yeah. here, so I actually kind of agreed with this gate that we have. It, it's designed to do the right thing. It's literally pretty low. It's, uh, did you commit new code? And is that code uh, approximately 20% covered? Just to make sure you didn't abandon writing unit tests at all for the stuff you're adding. The problem I ran into my code was, taking advantage of some existing code that I needed to refactor a little bit and therefore was not covered and became my problem. Yep. Um, thought the properties that... are those being excluded from your 25%? President Nasher brought up a point of making sure that you exclude some things from code coverage. Sure, like generated files, that's right. Uh, auto properties are the ones that are just like public get set with no method bodies.
I lost audio. Great. No, we just went quiet. Oh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I see the audio bar moving, but I, I was kind of waiting for <laughs> napalm there. Uh, I would say, and this is me talking without thinking things yeah, yeah. through, which happens often. As long as it's uh, on topic. <laughs> I could you can talk without thinking with things through. Gate. I would go with a soft gate, if that makes sense. Like, make it a gate, but leave the keys in the lock. Give, make it warn. Make it send out a warning. Make it require an extra person to do a, to do a code review. But don't yeah, get, make it a stop that you have to go around, right? Here, uh, this is where I think there's an opportunity for enhancement. I don't remember, I don't think it had this capability in it, but there used to be a product, uh, Shame the Build or something, that literally, um, it was a kit that you'd plug into your CI CD pipeline, and it would send messages, and even to the point of if you wanted to have, this is of course when people were in the office, a light and an alarm go off anytime somebody broke the build, and it would shame that person endlessly for doing so. <laughs> oh, no. No. This, but I want it for you didn't write your tests, let me push stuff through. Uh, you mean like when someone uses that key and forces well, no. something true, you... Instead of stopping the, the pipeline altogether, just emit, like, let it go through. But if it's a file that I didn't create and it had no previous code coverage, then shame that mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you but can't so sure. blame in code already, but... Yeah, no, but something that's that... not something that, you know, goes <laughs> up into people's faces. It's just, you know, oh, yeah. I wonder who wrote this line. You have to look it up. Like, for me, what that would do is it would make me want to find another job. Ah, uh, here yeah. it is. This is what I'm looking <laughs> at in case anybody's curious. It doesn't look like it may be well-maintained anymore, but it was sirenofshame.com. <laughs> okay. I'm going to look at it. Siren of shame shame.com yeah it's not handsome in, uh, back then <laughs> okay uh... Ooh. Oh, that was that close yes like the website has seen better days but uh i love when the uh logo and the images and stuff don't load yeah that shows lots of love and TLC. Not sure what that TLC stands for. Very neat. Not right. It probably is just totally gone and somebody uh, forgot to take down the website. Uh, probably. But the video... Well, well, and, and it disappears in someone's like 50 domain uh, invoice. Right. At least the video... I don't buy every single domain I find funny. No, I promise you I don't from YouTube is there. So like you can get an idea of what the functionality was and it had leaderboards and everything. You got points for whether you uh, successfully committed things without breaking the build, etc. I thought it was a very well thought out product to be honest. Yeah. But I mean like anything that would that would hound someone for making a mistake, I I think that that would be a lot more detrimental than the benefits you get yeah, from that's... rewarding someone for you're yeah, probably that's right. exactly what I meant. You're, you're I, probably right, but I still find it hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're allowed to. For sure. Having someone's name on a broken build, having, you know, to look up a um, uh, a blame row for who wrote this piece of code, that's fine because that's actively looking for something. That can mean that you're looking for help or an explanation or whatever. But openly and actively shaming someone for something they did ah eh, no nah, it doesn't sit quite right with me i mean the way of making a team hate each other it, it put it this way yes it came from a place of frustration because at the time where i saw this i was working at a shop that we had people i mean unfortunately it wasn't the most mature organization as far as software practices go and mm -hmm. people emit stuff all the time without checking that it built first and then of course that would hamper other developers when they pull down main and be like hey what the hell it doesn't work yeah 
Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't be able to merge if it doesn't build. Well, like I said, it was a uh, very early time at that shop I was at, and they had not really invested in CICD and stuff at that time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. It got much better, so, but that, yeah. that was it is for them. Any great plans for the weekend, guys? Yes. Tell me all about them. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can go ahead and go, Napal. Uh, I mean, my plans are... Uh... Happy wife, happy life task. Uh, effectively, I gotta uh, work with my wife this weekend, clearing some land on the family property. Cool. What about you, Bindle? Well, it's bookkeeping times. So tomorrow yes. I will do a friend's bookkeeping for 2023, which friend? was last year. Someone else's, you mean? Yeah, someone else's. A friend someone else's gotcha. i'm not getting paid i'm just uh, being a nice person yeah that's awesome yeah and then i'm going to be doing my own bookkeeping for q4 of 2023 which is also an experience mm. and we then on in sunday taxes. you've done it oh go ahead on sunday i didn't know you yeah. were done and then on sunday i'm doing my sister's taxes oh geez <laughs> so that is my weekend. That does not sound fun. <laughs> oh, no could worries. Have been better. Thank you so much for being in, in the voice channel, though. Yeah, take care, take care Napalm. So how mean. are you? And what, uh, Sorry, what are you doing? I, I can't talk about it. <laughs> That's it. You can't talk about it. No. Secrets or no funds. Uh, it's It's definitely funds. That's good. Well, we'll see what happens. Yep. Can you tell us about it next week? Uh, most likely not. Okay. Then I won't pry. Uh, cool. Good. good. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also heading out to uh, uh, dinner with a friend in just an hour and 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that. Yeah. That's going to be cool. I hope. I hope it's cool. Mm. I hope it's good. Uh, can you tell us where you're going for dinner? Uh, I'm going to a place food? called Blackstone. That sounds like it would be a artisan pizza place. No. Aww. It's a <laughs> place where they give you <laughs> pretty much raw meat and a stone that is like 700 oh. degrees warm. And you, um, yeah. You cook your meat on you the stuff. You fry so your own almost, food at the table. Almost like a, a yakitori or... A... Yeah, those Korean uh, places with hibachi, the yeah. uh, small barbecue, <laughs> right? Well, I was thinking Japanese, but yeah, the Korean places do. Yeah. I mean, lots of cultures have it. Yeah. But yours is with an actual stone? That's really yep. cool. Yeah, I think it's like a volcanic stone or something. That's really cool. Yeah. I've never had that, nor did I know it was an actual thing. I yeah. haven't either, <laughs> but I hear good things. Hey, President Not Sure knows what it's called. Shabu. Uh, Shabu? Shabu. Blackstone Steakhouse in mm. Sweden. Oh my goodness. This is the road that we should not be going down. Um, <laughs> Meat? <laughs> We will, we will never get back on topic and it will be my fault and then I won't be able to tell you to stay off of off of cultural political topics because yeah. here I am on food on a techie channel yeah oh my gosh this looks tasty though oh <laughs> but yes it's called shadow it. does that translate uh, to something president question mark we're both staring at the chat, waiting expectantly at you. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man. Anonymous, anonymously 001. Does Shabu, does Shabu stand or translate to something in English? Should I just look it up? It translates directly to cooking with hot lava stone. Um, okay. Yeah. And that's no, I don't exactly know. what this is. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> maybe that was a lie. I don't know. Yes. That was, that was just me saying it before I even loaded the okay thing. Um, what language is Shavu then? Because if Thindel doesn't know what it stands for, it's not Swedish. Not Svenska. Oh. Anything? Here we go. Thank you and thank you. So Shabu is a slang term for the drug methamphetamine. <laughs> okay, that was not what it was. So it's probably this Philippine one. That's a, nope. That's that's even more drug. Um, it's a fictional genie from the sitcom Just Our Luck. Traditional dance from Himachal. Pradesh, a uh, name for tapioca in Bengali cuisine. Shabu Iran is a village in South Khorasan Kho province. Um, it's somewhere from China. Wow. <laughs> it means hot pot. So it's Shabu Shabu specifically. Shabu Shabu, which is Japanese. Ro Bleh, with the Ramaji as Shabu Shabu all together. Isn't this she ya boo? She ya boo. She ya boo? Yeah. There we go. Just means hot pot. So this is Japanese and. Oh, okay. So he wasn't naming the one that yours is. He was naming the one that I was talking about where you get raw cutlets. And in this case, you use hot water and that's what cooks. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. I was actually thinking of hibachi, which they give you a grill in the middle of your table. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of as well. Like an actual coal grill, right? Yeah. Or it could yeah. be gas, who knows, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote something wrong. Uh, When? Where? Why? How? Uh, now I'm uh, chatting with a guy at the same time. Oh, because oh multitask. okay. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. dear. Um, oh, dear. Oh no. Yeah, I've Still heard that there's some like uh, similar to Dutch oven. Mm. Mm. It's called meat fat um steam, whatever you want to call it. You know that comes off the meat when you when you fry it. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. grease uh, stuck in the walls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That um it doesn't smell great there anymore. But yeah. I'll go, I'll try it. Ours I'll is so annoying. Like. Um, our stove is awesome. I will start with that. It has a really mm -hmm. good extractor. However, mm -hmm. the steam that comes off of uh, frying stuff and using oil on the stove is going up and we have black cabinets. And so it speckles the cabinets and it's really hard to clean off. Yeah. Ugh, I hate that. I know what you mean. It's like, man, now I see why a lot of stoves just don't have cabinets above them or next to them. Mm -hmm. They have like a gap. And uh, mine like that. Yours but is like that. In the last like place, it, no, no, mine has a gap, but the last place I was at didn't. And yeah. keeping those walls around it yeah. clean was hell. Yeah. Hmm. Like the backsplash that we put on it is super easy to clean, but. Yeah. Uh, like we have the thing where the extractor above it is a combination microwave with the extractor underneath and mm. that's pretty easy to clean off but then there's 
black cabinets to the left and right, and then all the way on top of everything. Duct tape all hey, over the Duke cabinets. has a good idea. Solved. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can buy, like, uh, you There's know, glass covers. Yeah. That you yeah, can put in the walls. So can, like... Yeah. Either clean the glass or just uh, pull it off the wall and put it in um, uh, in dishwasher. Yeah. That would be much easier to clean. If only it was aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a piece of um, a piece of glass isn't an issue, right? Like the way the cabinets look currently is sleek and then putting glass on top of it might anyway it's an aesthetic thing mm. <laughs> i'm not a designer so i wouldn't know nah same Maybe. here but better we can agree that it's better than duct tape right <laughs> no we can't <laughs> no you can get colored duct tape and it's just as good as duct tape I can't say it with a straight face. Well. I dragged. Mm. Oh, man. Shabu Shabu. I am, like, really off today. Oh, no. Like, in a mm. in a downward, spot, uh, downward slope? Kind no, of no, off, off as in, uh, you know, zero counter. energy and... Um, um, zero energy, tired... Kind of. Hi, I'm today. I'm Dukasoft. Yeah, hi, Dukasoft. I'm off today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely have been feeling that more lately. It's so weird because mm. I, I'm pretty sure I've said it a few times on the channel, but I used to have this thing where I always felt drained, always felt like everything was requiring energy that I didn't have all the time. And so I needed to conserve energy. And then yeah. I changed my mindset and realized for myself, again, this might not apply to everyone, that energy is limitless. If you want it, you just reach into this bottomless vat that has energy in it. And you can be energized if you choose to do so. The hard part is that initial choosing. And over the past week even though i know that that's a thing it's been really really hard for me to reach into the vat pull out the energy needed, and do the things that needed to get done i just feel so I have tired now never been able to do that mm. as in <laughs> maybe it's just me who yeah i don't know don't know what i'm doing but Like again, I'm not gonna force my um, belief. No, no, no. I mean, hearing other anyone. people's, uh, hearing how other people think about it is mm -hmm. only good, right? Maybe, yeah. I mean, like mm -hmm. it, as long as the other people telling me about how it is for them, they aren't trying to get me mm -hmm. to buy into it as well. Yep. And yeah, yep. and that's what I want to make sure that I'm not doing. It's like <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. I mean learning how other people do it can open your own mind to how it mm -hmm. could be done that. does that make sense yeah that because i've never heard I about was. you know reaching into a uh, bottomless vat of it, energy you know, is what bottomless i call it. <laughs> yeah i haven't even heard of that before but, i mean if you can do it then yeah. that's awesome it's right? such a weird feeling the first time that i did it where i was like okay I, I don't feel like life today. And it was really mm. like like the bottom spiral of a manic depressive episode. And mm. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pretend that I have energy, essentially, is what it was. And then I could just get stuff done. And then I mm. was going, and Thanks. I'm like, I'm actually enjoying this now. I feel mm. like I have the energy to do this. Yeah. I mean, forcing yourself to do things, yes. But oh. I... I kind of feel horrible while doing it but right now i'm like i can't concentrate it's not that mm -hmm. i'm not doing things that's what it's, it's been over I the try past to do week things for me. and i'm like just in a cloud here in a fog yeah. that what oh. you're talking about there <laughs> that's definitely oh. a thing 
Speaking of fog, holy crap, last night. Fog, yeah. Uh, just telling stories here. So, I was driving home from the conference. You know, just minding my own business, going down the road in like, what, 100 miles an hour or something? 100 so, miles an hour. Yeah, kilometers. so 160 ish kilometers. Yeah, many kilometers an hour, <laughs> right? The okay. road may or may not have been set at 120 kilometers an hour, uh -huh. so it's like <laughs> a little bit over. And then suddenly, ice fog or snow fog or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Because yes, the, uh, the road was covered in snow. The one where it's like freezing drizzle? Uh, it was foggy. minus five, so that's what yeah. 25, 30 somewhere Americans, yeah, yeah. and not terribly cold, still. but yeah, sub freezing, definitely. But no water anywhere. It was, you know, snow. Uh, and all of a sudden, just a wall of fog out of Jeez. nowhere. And I hit it at like, you know, yeah, 160 kilometers, almost 100 miles an hour. <laughs> that was an experience oh and you know you're driving on snow so just hitting the brakes would have been yeah a really not bad a good idea, idea as well yeah. <laughs> were you in the just... your pole star you still yeah. have it yeah and does that have yeah, like regenerative i still have it. i haven't crashed it yet uh yes it does so, so the, i had to when you lifted off... your foot off of the accelerator it actually did start slowing down for you like immediately oh yeah yeah, but because that'd be scary for me. Like that's one thing that I would be afraid of with regenerative braking, where you're doing one pedal driving, and it's like your natural reaction to, oh, I just hit a wall of fog. Take my foot off the pedal, and then you're slowing yeah. down faster than you intended to, and now you're sliding all over the place. Yeah, um, I don't use one pedal driving, but oh. it still regenerates oh, quite heavily. But I've I've learned enough about uh, how it behaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And You've been um, it I am, you know, I'm, I'm going to pound my own chest here, but I am a fairly good driver mm -hmm. when it comes to shit, shit hitting the fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you don't you overreact to those situations. No, and that made sense. Uh, it was appropriate. I reacted, but I did not react with a panic. I right. let off my my throttle, but I didn't just release it and hit the brakes. Right. But, you know, the pucker factor was pretty <laughs> darn high. <laughs> oh, I want to see that face. You got to do it on your stream next time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I wish I had, a, I think I've had worse, but not by very much. Mm. I think the worst one ever was when I was doing some uh, formula driving. Uh, I was going down the straight at calculated 30 miles, it must have been like 150 Just or so. Just done at 30 according to president, not sure. Uh, no, not in that case. Uh, <laughs> times 1.6 for Sweden units. But yeah, it was going very, very fast. All right, down the straight in the rain. I need to start braking to take a corner and both my front wheels just lock up. And the corner is coming. So I let off and I try again and they just lock up. Mm -hmm. And the corner is still coming and it's getting closer. You're like pump, pump, but gently. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Formula cars don't have ABS. Yeah, yeah. And they have no steering assist or anything. <laughs> I kind of went off track there. Luckily, oh, there no. wasn't a barrier. It was only mud. Mm. So I don't know what I can might have had, like 60 maybe when I went off the road spinning oh, in a oh. Formula car, which is basically a metal tube. With an engine strapped to it. Uh, oh, would not recommend. <laughs> also, very, very high pucker factor. I may have needed <laughs> a crowbar to get that sh share out of my ass. I think I pulled it up so far. Yeah. Great. But that was the wor worst one, and this might have actually been the second one ever. 
because, yeah, I got a little bit scared. Yeah. Just a tiny, I, tiny I had a bit few, bit. a few close calls because mm -hmm. I wasn't of. I used to have many issues, and one of them was alcohol. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have never driven drunk, but I'm not judging never. people who <laughs> didn't have no. Uh, excuse my expression, but I'm not judging people who don't have enough self-control to not do it. I just wish mm. they wouldn't. Mm. Uh, I have driven the day after the fact when I probably shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's something that I am ashamed of. Because I really shouldn't have. Again, I like driving and I don't want to put other people in jeopardy because I'm an yeah. idiot. But never while, you know, actively drunk. Just right. lowered uh, reaction times and stuff. Inhibited. Yes, inhibited. Exactly. Or even crawl. I would Although, just rather just stay wherever I am until... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is wears off. Yeah. Uh, but driving, again, so. I consider myself a good driver, but I so I think I was a better the day after driver than most, but I was definitely not a good driver. I mean, in absolute terms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't do that. Bad yeah. idea. Oh. Yeah. Just, totally. if you have plans, cancel them. But it's, it's really hard to it. do in the moment. It's, it's easy to say. It's easy to... Oh, talk about, but just knowing the mindset that I was in whenever it's mm -hmm. like even the times when I'm like I'm not even gonna buy alcohol and then I go and I'm at the store and I'm picking it up off of the shelf and I'm like I'm not gonna buy this and then I walk to the checkout and I'm like I'm not gonna drink this after I buy it I'm gonna pour it down the sink and it, it just goes from there so it's like uh -uh. yeah <laughs> you uh, don't make really good decisions when that's buy a... cigarettes oh yeah, so you, you kind of know the feeling. I mean, I'm sure it's different yeah. with nicotine than it is with alcohol, but... No, but I know the feeling. I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but I know, yeah. you know, where you're coming from in the general sense. And stopping that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure what it's like in the US, but over here, with alcohol, I mean, but over here, cigarettes are like, you know, they're at the counter at the uh -huh, exit uh -huh, uh -huh. so so it's like there's no reason to just not say and can i get a pack of yeah and you have to go like really right there yeah can't you say <laughs> oh i won't go down that aisle yeah because <laughs> it's where you go to check out yeah yeah that's that would be rough that'd be really rough yeah yeah not sure how often the alcohol is stored like that in the u.s um, there are right some, but they're like the, the, the small micro, micro, like the one shot little bottles. They sometimes yeah. have those at the checkout counters, but not in most grocery Still, stores. Well, if you're a recovering alcoholic, or you have a trouble staying away from alcohol, that is bad enough, I think. Yeah, the worst one was, there are these things called gravity bump. No, not gravity bumps. Hey, Joker. Um, <laughs> Um, there were these little bombs, these little bottles that were like this, and they didn't taste like alcohol, and they just had them in, you know how sometimes they have to display things right outside of the cash registers, and so they have them yep. there, you just stick your hand in it, pull a couple out, and walk to the cash register, and it's like, I, how did, how did these end up in my hand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to just grab one without thinking about it. Yeah. And like... Oh, but I kind of want one, and it's right here. I would, I would never go here, or go out of my way to get right. this. But it's right <laughs> here, and yeah, being so addicted. One of the easier things sucks. for me now is I don't even go to the grocery store anymore. I do oh. my grocery shopping online, but not Ooh. that, not that it's a big thing as much anymore. But it is nice to not have the temptation. Yeah, yeah. 
And I'm, I mean, I'm on an entirely different one. level, sugar and candy is kind of the oh, same yeah. thing. With like, it's about those just instant, not kind planned of purchases. Like, mm -hmm. just you weren't going to buy candy, but now it's right in front of you. Are you sure you don't want a bar of chocolate? Yeah, just a little Kit Kat or uh, Snickers. Yeah. Something. Yeah. What harm could it it's do? It's not going to hurt. Bag of chips. No. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, it's not the same thing, but it's, it's the same so uh, tactic. Yeah. Yeah. So, on that very happy and uplifting Yay, let's subject and topic. <laughs> Take us with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of got to run. But before you do that, you yeah, dude, exactly. Up. Must resist. What? Coming in. Do your stand up. All right. So this week I had a great time having a session at a conference. It went awesome. Uh, I'm planning to do a retrospective uh, over the weekend mm -hmm. once I get cool. my notes back. Uh, try and figure out where to take from there. If I should uh, submit it to more places or what to do with it. Other than that, nothing major and no blockers. Just tons oh. of taxes to do as well. But I am curious though, do, the is there a place where we can watch it? Your Not your yet, but it was supposed to be up the last time I ran it. It was supposed to be up on the YouTube channel, but they didn't publish anything. <laughs> but they said that this is going to be um, this going to be out quick like because everything was recorded. So, I'm just hoping they'll get it out before um, before 2030 so yeah that's me <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when if I get a recording I will definitely post it in discord yes yes right all right well thank you yep. again for being in the voice channel it's great having yeah you. always man it's always good here Whoa. so take care and have a great one Enjoy your dinner. Chat. yeah I will try bye bye cool. That was Thindle, everyone. Um, once again, if you don't know Thindle, definitely check out his channel. Um, he is a very, very knowledgeable .NET developer who does a lot of moving stuff from .NET Framework uh, to .NET Core. And Yogurt came in. Hello, Yogurt. So this might be your first community day here. Um, Community Day, I open up the voice channel in Discord. So if you want to have a verbal discussion to talk about projects that you're working on, ask for help, discuss anything that you're going through, you can hop into Discord, join any of the voice channels, let me know, and I'll pull you into the uh, stream room. And uh, when you're in there, just mute the stream so that you only hear the audio coming from Discord, and that will be my voice and you and then i also have the video going in discord so that you can see real time on screen in case there's anything that we're referencing code wise if you are not comfortable having your voice come through on the stream because i do post my videos to youtube uh after 24 hours because affiliate um and if you're not comfortable with that we can still have conversation through chat and we'll just go from there that said yogurt said Maybe in an hour and a half, I'm already gone <laughs> at that time. So I do end my stream in about 45 minutes. So I go for two hours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, but again, feel free to use chat uh, as you already have been. So Yogurt said, I think I figured out my issue. Just need to figure out how to fix it. Yeah. So was it what you already posted in Discord? Um, I've been trying to find time to do some looking at your code base, but um, day job and then I'm going to say it, night job too. <laughs> too many instances. So you said, so I have been doing some searching and debugging and came to the conclusion maybe it's running two different instances of logger. I see. Yeah, so I didn't really know the logging system issue. The only thing I think I responded to was... 
do I have any tutorial videos? I do not have tutorial videos on YouTube. Um, I will tell you about that in a second. Um, the thing that I responded to you in Discord was about secrets. So I didn't really read about the logging thing and didn't open your... You know what? Now's a good time to open your code, though. You're only two months. Yeah, yeah, definitely okay. But you think you can figure out the secrets part now. That's awesome. Um, so anonymously... I want to say this in a non... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll just say it the way that I'm going to say it because I can't think of, of any other way to say it. I, for my, for my normal day, when I stream, I do work in the morning, take a break to stream, do work after that, do some cooking. And then in the evenings, there is a nebulous thing that prevents me from being able to also participate in discord and social media and all that stuff so i don't really do stuff outside of this stream for the stream nor produce content for youtube because all of the other time slots are already filled with um work ish type things and of course family so yeah it would be nice to have um content out there that might be helpful but there are there are lots and lots of resources. So the only thing that I can really do is point you to people that I have used to learn myself, like Kujinkat, one of the best C-sharp resources that I have used for learning .NET stuff. Um, I am Tim Corey, another great resource for entity framework type stuff and just, yeah, .NET in general. Um, and then a whole bunch of people that I can't think of off the top of my head. Carl Franklin for Blazor Train. Uh, is it just Carl Franklin? Yeah, I think this is his site. No. Oh, this is his um, music site. So he does music as well. Yeah. Uh, um, Blazor Train, I think, would be the name of that channel. I thought that was just the name of the show. Dev Express. Oh, yeah, yeah. He streams for Dev Express. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, Nick Chapsis. Um, so if you're into getting into maybe some non, uh, non-traditional ways of doing things, Nick Chapsis is a great resource. Also for, you know, better ways to do stuff. But he does tend to lean more into the, this isn't widely used. I want more people to use this because it's such a great approach, in my opinion, kind of thing. So he'll do, he'll give some pointers and some opinions on that. He is highly opinionated, but with good reason. He's got great opinions, in my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> He's got some good thoughts. Uh, I don't agree with everything that he puts out, but you shouldn't, I guess. Um, Question everything and determine whether it's right for your situation. But other than that, he puts out great content, great ideas. And, and Yogurt, he has um, videos on logging, now that I think of it. Uh, Nick Chaps' logging. Yeah, so he has an entire talk that he did at N NDC seven months ago, and he does um, talks about it often. So he might be a good resource for what you're doing. Yeah, it's definitely past beginner. Um, sometimes it is too advanced, but um, most of the time it is, yeah, about intermediate level. Uh, Tim Corey videos convinced me to switch to WPF and MVVM. Um, James Montemagno, if you want some uh, MVVM related things, including Maui, especially Maui, I guess. Um, <laughs> who else? Who else? Um, there was someone that I just thought of that slipped in my mind 
but yeah, again, so like I do, I use a lot of resources when I'm learning a topic. And right now, the primary topic that I'm into learning about is MVVM, uh, MVVM is LLMs um, and just generative AI and doing it ethically and, and locally <laughs> is the big one. So I've been using a lot of those resources. Um, I get it. I struggle to make time to stream myself. Hmm. Yeah. And then Thindle says, getting ready headphones still on. Both Tim Corey and Carl Franklin are insanely good resources, but they're pretty fuzzy. <laughs> Not the most directly translatable content. True. If you're just learning. Um, if you want to get better and expand, they're great. But to start out, there are others for sure. Oh, Les. Les Jackson. is another great resource for .NET. Um, Nerd Herder is the one that introduced me to his videos. Um, what is the name of that dude? Powell. CSS. So this is, this dude here is like, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of his presentation skills, but man, he's got great content. Um, it's so informative, so helpful. So if, if you're struggling with UI, with CSS stuff, with HTML, this is a great resource. Yeah. <laughs> um, so President Nasher says, uh, but it feels like he's one of the only de uh, ones that can get the sweet spot, Nick Chapsis. Um, For example, using task cancellation, he's got a video on that. Yes. So cancellation tokens are great uh, technique. What's wrong with his presentation skills? I've never watched them. Um, it's it's a me thing. So it's it's not everyone is going to have the same reaction as me. It's it's just a me thing. <laughs> and that's why I'm still highly, highly recommending him because I know it's just a personality thing for me, but it's great, great content. Um, all right, yogurt, enjoy your time though. You say it's so like, like it's not something you want to do. <laughs> My wording for that but would be, but now I get to go be with my wife for lunch. Like it's a privilege because it is, for me at least. Um, why does the cursor turn red dot when I'm hovering on your stream? Because I have added an extension called Heat. And what I'm planning on doing with that is using it with the bot where when you click on the screen anywhere on the stream itself, it should send me the coordinates of the screen where you are clicking. And then I should be able to send that to OBS and get the video um, image to find out where exactly on the screen you're clicking. Well, first of all, like the, the position itself should be where I have some interactable something or other. Um, but I'll be able to get a location that you click on so that you can um, interact with whatever the thing might be. Like maybe I'll put something above my head that if you click on it, it'll do a thing. I don't know. <laughs> Pop a balloon and drop shaving cream all over my head. People seem to like that. It's so you can make me look like Rudolph. I will sit very still and allow you to make me look like Rudolph. Uh, yogurt says i have no job i so i go get her every day between the kids and her sometimes i feel like a, to a taxi service oh i'm sorry <laughs> i would still find it to be a privilege with my wife yeah um what's wrong with his presentation skills i already read that okay um, what else? What else? Um, 
on Wednesday's stream. So definitely bring up topics if you have things that you want help with that you just want to talk about. We will um, spend, I'm saying um a lot suddenly. We will spend time talking about those things. And um, <laughs> until then, I'm going to go back to this because on Wednesday, I got some requests for what to do with sounds and we we found some sounds that we're going to be using with the game so here here's one thing that we're gonna do cool yes please do yogurt and we'll do our best to respond to you when you do if you do have any issues that you do run into or if you just want to let us know that you figured it out that's super nice um what we're going to do here is we're going to have all of our art launches and our impacts and fart misses so one magical thing that we're going to do is if the for chatter is Dukasoft oh you know what I've been doing lately I've been doing string dot equals I think it's because I keep getting refactoring suggestions doing string dot equals so that you can do string comparison dot ignore case. Uh, what I normally do is this first thing dot to lower compared to lowercase string kind of thing. So if it's Dukasoft, and then I'll probably just have a list, but for now we're going to test it with Dukasoft. If it's Dukasoft shooting, and he's shooting for a draw force of greater than 90, then instead of using private, not private, bar, <laughs> is it faster this way? Um, is what faster this way? <laughs> var audio file, we're, we're going to use um, that one, and then we're going to overwrite it if Dukasoft, and it's going to be a random number, ran dot shared dot next uh, double is greater than 0.5, then we use fart launch one. Otherwise, oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, this is the wrong one. That's the random one. That one's down here. That's this one. And actually, I can put this up here. So this goes outside of this if statement. The only thing that we're doing here is picking the audio file. So here, oh man, oh lag, oh llama is what I've been using lately. And it is fast. Oh, let me tell you, it is fast. And then I'm gonna duplicate you, put you there, call you audio file name. And then by default, you're just going to be bow loading. OK, so if we are doing a draw force of less than or equal to 90 and you are Dukasoft. Then we're going to pick one of the random art sounds. But the one that I need for this one is the try hard lunch. Oh, that's wrong too. That is also wrong. So no, that doesn't go there. That goes down here. And then down here, get Dukasoft. 
Oh, <laughs> the equal versus two lower. I honestly don't know what the um, what the reason for that is. Var is Duca soft equals for chatter display name two lower equals Duca soft, and we'll see if maybe the the uh, refactor suggestion tells us why. Hello, Irish John Games. I already gave you a shout out, a uh, special shout out earlier, but here is a normal shout out with clip so you can know what to expect. If you subscribe to, I mean, if you follow, <laughs> like and subscribe, if you follow Irish John Games and go to his streams, this is what you, you might be in for. There might be cursing. Oh, Cover your ears. Problem. Anyway, guys, what's the feckin' crank? What's the crickety crankledy feckin' shite? What's the feckin' shitin' bastard fuckity bastard shitin' feck? Feckity bollock. Bollock. <clears throat> bollock to it anyway. Hmm? Love your streams. Anyway, Irish John Games is a game developer who works on a game called Rise of Piracy. You can see it on Steam right there at that link. You can also see it on the Microprose website because yes, his publisher is Microprose. That's right. He is a um, indie game dev and he has a publisher named Microprose, which you may have heard of before. It is so cool and I'm so happy for him. But his streams are great. He's got good energy. Um, the work that he does is phenomenal. Definitely take a look at his wonderful game, Rise of Piracy. He also has a few um, assets in the Unity Asset Store. One of my favorite being Fog, yeah. Um, <laughs> I did actually, so I know that you um, offered or, or suggested, whatever the word is, but um, you had offered, because you're such an awesome guy, to maybe help me get a copy of Help Me Place. Ha ha. Um, but I ended up just buying it because I want to support you that way. Dang it. He's also got a great fourth wall store with some pirate booty. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but I know that I'm going to want to use it when I start doing all of the productivity application AR development. But yeah, there you go. That's Irish John Games. Check him out. He'll be streaming in about an hour. Or if he's late, which he's never late, but if he's late, um, it'll be after that. <laughs> Simple as it gets. Uh, ¿Qué más? We were doing this. So where's my refactor? Why isn't this giving me... Why aren't you giving me use equals? Interesting. So I'm not getting the refactor here for some reason. The refactor suggestion that says use string dot equals instead of comparing dot to lower. So I don't know. I, maybe this is like it's not even giving me a refactor to change this to this format. So I don't know. I don't know what the what the refactor thing is. Awesome. Thank you so much for the follow, Sophine. So Sophine, am I close? Am I anywhere close to saying your name correctly? No, not even close. <laughs> um, so fine. It's like Sofiane. It's an Arabic name. Well, it is a very pretty name. <laughs> Can I say that? Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for the follow. I need to write that down in a book somewhere. Um, if I had, so one thing that I want to turn on or to enable with my bot is MemGPT. 
It's from Mal. Well, can I still say that it's a very pretty name? I mean, if that's offensive, then I don't want to. I don't want to offend you. I don't know. It's a cool name. Is that better? Um, <laughs> automated realms. Remember that Sol Fian is pronounced like Sa or Sofian. Remember that automated realms. And so by doing this, wait, wait, wait. Why are you putting nay at the end? Should not be nay at the end. I didn't say put nay at the end. Anyway, um, one day in the future, not now, we'd be able to, oh my God, great. <laughs> We'd be able to come back to Automated Realms and say, how do you pronounce Sofian's name? And it'll be like, Sofian, obviously. Actually, right now it'll say Sofian A. How dare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we should be scared. <laughs> it's so on top of things, it's definitely going to take over the world in the next five days. Be careful. Anyway, here's is Dukasoft, so I don't have to check this multiple times the same way. So if is Dukasoft, which this is eventually going to be re uh, not even renamed, we're going to still keep it is Dukasoft, but we're going to have it just have a list of chatters that will be able to use the um, Poot sounds. It should be called arrow poot, not arrow, not, not, anyway. Okay, so if is Dukasoft, then audio file is going to be one of these two. Um, yeah, I forget which one of you is the, wait, why did you just tell me you can't play? It... <laughs> You should know that you should try playing with an audio player. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> this better be good. Okay, so that one is definitely not our initial um, draw. There's one specific one that I'm looking for. So not one. And then what does two sound like? Wait, that was... Oh, it's definitely one. Um, shoot delay. We're going to default to time span from seconds one. And then how long is this? Yeah, so write it, write it one second. So that should still have to you and then otherwise here it's gonna be two else we're almost there took us off we're almost there audio file name and i don't want to um ignore chat at all so definitely let me know if you have stuff that you want to talk about um So this is at the end when it hits the target, and that would be launch impact one or two. Did you hear something? <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so if Dukasoft on impact, right here if is Dukasoft then our our audio file 
audio. So if you couldn't tell, what I am doing here is choosing a random audio file sound from our list of audio files. That's a sound I'm not used to hearing. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Thank you, Dukasoft, for letting me know that that's a sound that we have. Whoa. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? Random touch shared. And thank you for the bits. <laughs> wait, that was big gamey. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I did that on purpose. Dang it. Why did... <laughs> Why couldn't I keep going with it? I was supposed to be ignoring Big Gamey. It was supposed to be funny. Oh. I failed at it. Okay. If I save, we should have Hot Reloaded. So let me refresh this here. And Dukasoft, if you would do the honors to, to give this a test run. For archery? I'm hard to ignore. Usually a whiny baby. And use a power... Use one where your power is less than 90. Less than or equal to 90 and use one... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh gosh, that was a really nice second shot though. Holy cow, is that a bullseye? Your second shot was only 76? That doesn't seem right. Your second shot looked like it was right in the middle. You were not right in the middle. You were 0.12 meters from the center. Yeah, so I'm still working on um, <laughs> sync. <laughs> Excuse me. Did somebody turn on the beans redeem? Um, <laughs> I'm still working on sequencing it. So that, so that it is more, um, <laughs> step on the gas is what it's called. Anyway, more synchronized, synced, synced up with the actual animation. So if anyone else does, does archery, he loves it. Um, then they will get normal sounds unless you want to opt into getting poop sounds. So what I might do is maybe create a table so that if you want to opt in for a certain, oh, that would be cool. I want different sound sets essentially. And then maybe the customization. So like the, the most customization I was thinking is customize the color of your arrow, maybe customize your archer, but yeah, that's going to require a lot of work. We'd be essentially only a bot stream, bot development stream, making the stream game. Um, and I want to get back to the other one, to, to financial management. But anyway, if we have different sound sets, then you can just choose which set of sounds could play for your draw bow your release and then your impact target and your miss. So right now I do have a miss sound, but I only want to use the miss sound as it flies over the target. And since it's not sequenced to, to match anything yet, it'd be hard to do. So for example, the default um, full force sound is And then the not full force, <laughs> that was a pretty nice shot. Um, the not full force sound is. Yeah. 
And so those are the only two that I have currently. Man, that was actually really close. Let's do 99.5. Oh my goodness. 99 points out of 100? Dang. It's because the, the target was right in front of me. Cheater. Rigged. Hashtag rigged. Try practicing more to be the best archer you can be. I almost got 100. <laughs> what do you mean? I was 0 .2, 0 0.022 meters off. What is that? 2.2 centimeters away from the center? That's like the width of the arrow itself. To the naked eye, it would look like I hit the target right in the center. And anyway, like I said, the other thing that I want to add is making sure that your score is, well, two things, making sure that your score is like the sum of all of the rounds that you took. And number two is obviously going to the bathroom. Um, and the second thing is changing the, the maximum velocity by a little bit, varying the maximum velocity. So you can't always use the same numbers for the target in the same place. It'll still be off by just a little bit to add maybe a little bit of humanizing to it. And since we don't have wind resistance at the moment, that could also kind of be a wind resistance type of thing. Drag, as it were. Drake. Okay. Big gamey. What if? So I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you're still experiencing the issue with your dog rotating when it when it hits the bowl. What if instead of trying to disable um, kinematic? You might have fixed it. Okay. I was going to say, what if you turn the drag up really, really high so that it can't turn? Cool. But I, I hope you did fix it. That would be awesome. Solo solipsis just started streaming too. So solipsis. You guys don't know who Solo Solipsis is. You should definitely check him out if you're into mixed reality development or new technologies. Um he might have gotten his um Apple Vision Pro last week. So we might see some of that today, potentially. If you're into that sort of thing, like I said. Um, and again, I'm not saying to go to any one specific streamer because there's gonna be so many good streamers on within the next 15 minutes to an hour. That is gonna be hard to choose who to actually tune into. Um, I Like I said, I love being active in Big Gamey's stream when I can, because he's just got an amazing personality and I love hanging out with him. And I just love the vibes there. Um, Irish John's channel, he has a lot of really cool, fun people that just hang out there. And then Solo Solipsis is working in technologies that I really, really, really want to be working into. And yes, he did get his Apple Vision Pro. Um, I don't like that simple as playing a game right now, but that's fine. He's taking a break, but he got his Apple Vision Pro. So he's going to be 
poking around with the APIs for Apple Vision, and I'm interested to see what it can do with it. <laughs> not that into anything being Apple. So I'm not into very many Apple products either, but I am into mixed reality development. And so if they're maybe doing some, if Apple are doing something out of the box, that's pretty um, clever or forward thinking, then I'll definitely be happy to learn about and, and, take notes from that. Um, because right now the technology itself is not where it needs to be, in my opinion. Uh, we're putting these really big devices on our faces and they're heavy, they cause neck fatigue, even though they keep scaling down and making it lighter. There's still a whole bunch of issues with the design of it, with the look of it. Competition is good. And so what I'm looking for is the software and the methodologies for doing AR, mixed AR, virtual reality, mixed reality, whatever development is what is going to be improved and then solidified before the technology is ready for it. And I think we're getting pretty close to that already. And so when you develop for an Apple Vision Pro, they maybe have some methodologies that you wouldn't think of when developing for a MetaQuest or a HoloLens that you could just pick up and then port over to your, agno your device agnostic application, which is what I really, 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 really want to see. I better fix that offline screen you have there. Catch you later. Yes, please do. <laughs> please make that offline screen show me something better. Something more exciting. Like the starting screen. And Dukasoft, I'm sorry to tell you, but Bakemi was first. <laughs> I have line up Dukasoft. Oh, it's going to be a great time today over on Big Gaming Stream. I'm still going to to say check him out if you have the availability to. It's going to be fun times. I have a lot of work left for the rest of my day. We finalized our release candidate, but we can't actually test all of the features of it until um, cybersecurity. Well, we got our cybersecurity review. Now we're waiting for our privacy review to come back so that we can have a, um, production environment for the sign-in API that we're using. That was cleared by a moderator. How dare, how dare. <laughs> Hacks. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be a great day. Um, okay, so we got Dukasoft able to test out our farts sounds, which is absolutely necessary. How about if we actually start looking at how to sequence this so that in two minutes we will have a fully sequenced audio to animation thing that's going to work and it's going to be awesome. One thing that I think might be happening is like we aren't changing the audio sources variable, so it should never re-render the components. But it kind of seemed like the reason that it's not playing the initial launch or initial bow draw on some instances is because it's re-rendering this at the same time that it's trying to play the audio. 
um, more sounds is what I'm going to say to the um, archery animation. All right. So, what are your thoughts? And by you, I mean the guy sitting on the bottom right of your screen wearing the Batman shirt. What are your thoughts on where to put the sound sequencing logic? Kind of feels like it should be its own task that runs in tandem with this one that says turn on do animate. And so what will happen is once we get our launch result, we're going to mark specific portions of the launch um, launch result dot positions. So a position is now going to have a. Ooh, the position is going to have a time um, label. It's going to have a label. And that label is going to be an enum. So I'm going to call it position label, which is going to be nullable. And so we're going to create the public enum position label as, um, oh, and then we can add some, no, that would be hard to do. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Initial launch. Oh, 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 not nullable. It'll just be defaulted to position label uh, in flight. And then in flight, um, hit target and miss target. So miss target is going to be the starting timestamp of when I want to play the miss target sound. Um, and that way we know when to play the miss target sound. Yeah, cool. And then the next one is grounded. Sure. Thank you, Copilot. I would not have thought of that word. Um, <laughs> when it hits the ground is what I was going to say. But yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and so we're going to populate these values as we are generating the positions themselves, which is in the projectile code. We can get grounded. You can get grounded if you fart too loud. You have to fart quietly and carefully. <laughs> Get positions from animation. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on time. This is what always happens. It's like we hit the last few minutes and my brain is like, all right, now we're on overdrive. We're going to figure all the things out right now. And then I get in this flow because that's when I operate the best. And anyway, I'm trying to slow myself down so that we don't get too far into this and then I go over time. But it would be nice to wait until BitGamey is actually on screen to rate him this time. We usually rate him while he's still in his um, starting soon screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that just before I have to go to bed. It's like, all right, now I have all the answers. Let's try all the things. I'm in flow. I can't stop now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if. Yeah, so now we actually need this to just be if we are. Oh, no. If we are at the target, 
if we're at the target and not launch result hit target lowercase launch result hit target then this will be the moment that we missed the target so we will do position dot oh no 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 not position curve pause time dot label Did I put this in the wrong place? You need to be on pause time. Oh, you can't have a default, can you? Oh, you can. You label associated with the position of the projectile. Okay, so this is going to be dot position label equals position label dot miss target. Is curve pause time not a thing yet? Dang. Okay, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to set the value afterwards. We're going to try, but I think we're going to get a runtime error that says we're not allowed to set the value after a struct has been created. I don't know. So curve pause time dot position label is going to be missed target else. And then what we'll probably do is also have a helper method, um, an extension method on pause time to populate whether it is missed target or what based on oh yeah, yeah, yeah here we go based on where it's at so essentially if it's pause time uh Curve pause time dot time is zero, then it's initial launch. So if time is zero, then this is initial launch. Else if position is at the target distance, so specifically oh man <laughs> i don't know actually you know what we are gonna put greater than or equal to because we might have an X position that doesn't line up exactly with the target distance because it depends on the frames per second where we actually take that sample. So we'll probably make it a little bit smarter to know, are we in the window where we're passing over the target? So we'd probably check the previous pause time dot target distance is less than or dot x is less than the target distance, and then the current one is greater than or equal to the target distance, then we know that we're in the window. So then we need to set the previous one's label to miss target. Yeah. The Previous position is less than target distance, less than or equal to, and current it's greater than target distance. Set the previous pause time as missed target. Is it target? Uh, 
Okay. Um, so if we didn't hit the target, then we missed target, else we hit target. Oh my goodness. All right. Else um, we are in flight. So else if... Time is yeah. Else, if time <laughs> equals time to ground, then we are. Oh, y equals zero. That's a great one. Yeah, y equals zero. Let's do that. Else, if y equals zero, then we use grounded. And this is when you get grounded. All right, that's it. We will test this out next time. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed your day. Today's community day was mostly community day and then somewhat not community day. Um, what happened to Solo? <laughs> like I said before, we are going to raid over to Bit Gamey. He's probably going to be um, Bitly the kid by the time we get there. Yeah, thank you, Disco, for being here. I hope you guys had a great time. No, but... Yeah, here it is. A struct with uh, field initializers must include an explicitly declared constructor. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't be able to get the bot working before we write out. So let me find the, the YouTube message. Oh, actually, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Um, Launch result, position time, instead of initializing, we will not initialize, but we will set the default value to in flight. And there we go. So anything that we don't set a value for position label for is going to be, it's going to be fine. It's still not gonna launch. Uh, not going to build before. Just no reward for you. Anyway, time is running out, so YouTube, Discord, let's go to Big Gamey. Here we go. Ciao for now. <laughs>